Hello and welcome to ecotimes.tv magazine podcast. Today we've got a special guest, Joe Lamp, and he's from growingagreenerworld.com. And growingagreenerworld.com, um, Joe um, has got a TV show. So um, they cover everything kind of green and growing vegetables. Um, I'm your host, Alex Strong. Joe, are you there? I am here, Alex. Great stuff, great stuff. Thank you very much for coming on the show. And yeah. um, I'm honoured to to have you on here. And I'm really intrigued to to kind of hear um, about your travels in terms of finding, you know, amazing gardens, amazing people growing vegetables. Um, so I'll lead into what has been the most impressive episode you have ever filmed on people growing their own food? <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be on the show. So uh, with that question, I will tell you that we have filmed a lot of episodes about growing food. And the one that comes to mind probably right off the bat was in right in the heart of New York City on top of um, a factory and on top of um, a Navy shipyard building. And, and the the organization is called Brooklyn Grange. Right. And so on the rooftops of these two buildings, they have two and a half acres of growing space. And each year, they're able to grow 50,000 pounds of organic produce wow. on those rooftops. Yes. That's amazing. I know. It's, it's beautiful and it's amazing. You know, they're surrounded by skyscrapers and, you know, nothing but buildings. Mm. And then they have all this growing space and it's done all organically. And they have a real uh, dedicated group of volunteers plus about four people that all co-founded this organization that work diligently every day to make sure that it gets done. Did but you, through that, yeah. Sorry, Joe, did you say yeah. two and a half acres on a rooftop? Well, there's two buildings. Right. So each building is about an acre and a quarter of right. growing space. So yes, between the two buildings. Right? An, eight, an acre and a half <laughs> just just on top of a building is uh, is, is not no um, you know, yeah. kind of small roof. <laughs> no, these are very big buildings. I think one was like a uh, part of a car car factory building right. and the other one they built um it was on the shipyard where they were building ships for the war wow. so they're very big buildings and they you know you have all this unutilized space mm. on these rooftops which makes a lot of sense if the if the structure is strong enough you can bring in soil mm. engineered soil and utilize the space to grow food which is what they've done and what's really nice about it is that they have um they've made their systems completely public. They're very forthcoming with sharing their information because they want people right. around the world to replicate this, just like Will Allen does with his processes. Yeah. You know, they, they want more people to do what they're doing. And so they're just the ones that sort of pioneered the process, but they want people to sort of, um, you know, um, crowdsource and make it better by doing it themselves and finding improvements. And so everybody gets better at it. That's that's amazing. I was just going to ask. So, who, in terms of the best food growing system out there, what what has what have you seen that is the kind of best? Because I'm 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 really um, I love what Will Allen does. These yeah. people you've just mentioned sound like they've really nailing it. So, yeah. what is the best food growing system out there that's kind of the most productive and efficient? You know, so maybe um, automated watering for the plants or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, we've just mentioned Will Allen now for the second time, but mm. we we went and visited Will Allen the first year of our series. We've we've already done 5 years of shows, so about 100 episodes, but in the first 26 episodes, we had already been to Will Allen's place because we were fans of his and we went to see his processes mm. and the way that he integrates, you know, the use of compost and manure and worm castings and aquaponics and hydroponics. Yeah. I, I I think he is really sort of got the system down to a science that's very impressive. So I'd, ha you know, unfortunately I hate to be redundant, but he definitely is still one of the most impressive people we've ever seen. Now on that note, mm. as far as, you know, automated growing systems, we've featured a few that are really, really neat. Um, some in uh, include aquaponics, which of course includes growing with fish. Yep. And there's, um, there's a guy that we went to see, uh, in Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, which is not known for their um, their um, good manners, it's a pretty rough, pretty rough place, right? Yeah. 
but this guy is a real visionary. Um, uh, Pratt, um, Matt, uh, can't think of his first name, yeah. but I'll come up with it. Anyway, Sweetwater, Sweetwater um, Project was the name of it. But he wanted to develop an aquaponic system that, uh, first of all, they could make money from and sell it to sell their um, the fish and the produce to restaurants and so forth. But uh, in addition to that, he wanted to be able to come up with a system that could be utilized by you know, the average homeowner in that neighborhood so that mm. they could do an aquaponic system at their own home where they didn't have to have a fancy growing system or spend a lot of money to do it. But it would be a way for them to, you know, have a small aquaponics farm on their own house or property. Yes. Uh, and so uh, he's done a great job uh, getting that system implemented in around, around Chicago and that's taking off around the country as well. Right. Is, is this gentleman... Um was, is he the chap that used to work at Will Allen's place? And yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Uh, he's on my radar. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, so, so his system, uh, is it exactly the same or is he slightly tweaked it to make it a bit more automated? I, I His system is more, his name is Emmanuel Pratt, by the way. I just couldn't oh, think cool. of the first name. Yes. Yeah. His system is uh, much more automated from what, or let's put it this way. When we went to see Will Allen, you know, he had a nice operation, but it was part of a bigger system. Mm. Emmanuel Pratt's system is all aquaponics. Yep. So I, I would say that his systems are bigger and more automated. And uh, he's got them at all different sizes, too. Going back to what I said a minute ago, trying to make it scalable to the small homeowner. Yeah. Within, this, within his organization and his working models, he has everything from a tabletop aquaponics system to a full-scale commercial system, all in a warehouse that's quite fascinating to see. And we did an episode on it. So uh, it's pretty neat to, to be there to see it firsthand and then to tell the story in video. That's amazing. So in terms of, um, you know, if, if, if uh, one of our listeners is out there and, you know, wants to um, take the, the great step in terms of growing their own organic food, could they, um, say, utilize one of the Sweetwater um, aquaponic system, but maybe use it in a in a polytunnel, or they call them hoop houses in in America. So they instead of using um, lights, you know, um, they use the um, what's it called the the natural sunlight for the um, plants. Yes, I think I think you could. Um, in fact, you know, the aquaponic systems that we saw were um, inside of fixed buildings. Mm. So uh, I think the natural light, the, you know, the nice thing about a polytunnel or a hoop house would be that you'd have that natural light. So you wouldn't need, you know, artificial light and extra energy consumption to yeah. provide the light. Yeah. So I, I think that's a great idea. In fact, you know, the, uh, not to change subjects, but mm. you made me think about the polytunnels and the hoop houses. Mm. We, um, one of the interesting shows that we did about growing food was, a guy, I don't know if you're, are you familiar with a man by, uh, by the name of Elliot Coleman? Uh, it doesn't okay. ring a bell, no. He's, uh, he's big time in the States. And yep. uh, his claim to fame is that he's an organic gardener that lives in Maine, which is extremely cold. Yeah. And uh, he's able to grow edible uh, produce year-round in Maine, where it's extremely cold. With his polytunnel. Yes. And so sometimes he'll do a double polytunnel. So he'll have, you know, a layer within a layer. But by doing that, he can he can grow in a climate zone that's the equivalent to um, tropical, almost tropical, yeah, right. almost tropical, and so uh, he's able to do that year round. And so he's made quite a name for himself over the years. The interesting thing about it is he's in his seventies now, uh, but he is excited today about growing food as he was probably when he first got started, and he's been doing it no less than fifty years, I'm sure. But he's just, he's giddy with excitement every day because he just loves what he does. And he, again, like these other people that we feature, are really forthcoming with their information. And, and they love to share what they know. And he's got books and videos and things like that. But uh, he's a fascinating man. And he's really pioneered the use of the polytunnels for 
um, not only the commercial industry, but for yeah. people, you know, that want to have that sort of system in their backyard. So his That's systems are, are, are able to be replicated on a much smaller scale. And he's, he's demonstrated that for years. That's amazing. I'd, I've been a big fan, you know, I'd, basically at Eco Times, um, to TV, we're, we're very focused on what is the best way of doing things. You yeah. Know, what, what is the most efficient and effective way, you know, to grow food or what's the most effective way to build an eco house, you know, because yeah. there's so much, there's so much information and it's, it's, it's kind of our job to filter through, you know, the, the, all this information, find out what is the best. So this, this gentleman sounds amazing. And, yeah. um, in terms of, you say he had a double um, kind of hoop house slash mm-hmm. polytunnel. Does mm-hmm. that mean he's putting two, sorry, a polytunnel within a polytunnel? And my thoughts are um, l- less sunlight, um, obviously, for a plant. So, yes, he did get less sunlight, but it wasn't nearly as less as you think. Um, mm. I'm trying to remember what he told us, but he said he had a, probably a 20% degradation in light. Uh, using the two layers, which doesn't sound like much. You would no. think it would be, uh, you know, a lot less light getting to the plants. But uh, I asked the same question because that was my concern. But yeah. to be there and to see it and to see the, you know, how healthy the plants were, um, he was getting plenty of light to his leaf crops, like his spinach. That was one of the things he grew a lot throughout okay. the year. Um, so... So yeah, I think it was like twenty percent loss in uh, sunlight from the double coverage. Okay, because you, I always wonder, you know, in, in terms of polytunnels, so I'm sure you're aware of this as well. But the polytunnels uh, plastic never looks uh, completely see through, and I'm not right. a polytunnel expert, but I'm just right. wondering if you know why, Joe, or or we need to kind of dig down deeper and, and find out why it isn't totally clear, it's, you know, obviously to get ma- the, the maximum penetration from the sun. Um, yeah, I don't know either. Um, I, I mean, I was amazed that it was that low of a number uh, as far as the degradation of sunlight. Mm. Um, and so I don't, I'm not an expert on it. I was just mm. amazed and uh, impressed with what he was able to grow in, in spite of the fact yeah. that he was growing with two layers of poly. It, it seems to me like... I mean, I've I've looked into this, um, and we're we're still looking into this, you know, to find, you know, what is the perfect solution. But I I think um, my personal opinion from from research I've I've um, come across is that a polytunnel um, with a mix of aquaponic system in it, so you you're getting the natural sunlight for vegetables, you're growing your fish as well, um, and you're growing vegetables just within the polytunnel, and then maybe um like a solar panel pump to to flow the water around of the aquaponic system. That's my rough overview. We we will we will find out. Don't don't get me wrong on our quest, but I'm just wondering whether if there's anything else that's come across your radar that you think would take it to the next level. You know, it's interesting that you even mentioned the fact that uh, doing the aquaponic system inside of a polytunnel, because, you know, we have not come across that in the States that I know of anybody doing that, because the big thing here uh, is to utilize the empty factory space and the warehouses that are no longer being utilized and make them productive. And so that's that's where the real focus has been with people that have started these aquaponic systems is to find that empty warehouse space and utilize it to do the growing systems right uh because there's such a um a surplus of those buildings that are not being utilized so that's yeah. where we see it but i haven't come across people yet here that are doing it in polytunnels but like we said earlier in this conversation it makes sense to get to take advantage of the natural light as well and you still have the protection from the elements. So um, it sounds like the best of all worlds, really. Yes. I mean, I'm just thinking of the, you know, the, the homeowner that, you know, has a, a long garden. Um, because I know in the UK, I think um, you can, the maximum you can put in your garden is like a 20 foot polytunnel, which is, which is quite significant. It's not, it's not, a, it's, it's quite large. Right. So you can right. definitely, definitely feed your family with a polytunnel that size. Yes. Yes, you could. 20 feet is generous. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. But I, I you know, I was thinking, well, I don't want to, I don't want to, if you have a, uh, say, uh, aquaponic system with hydroponics, where hydroponics is obviously using the light, 
um, you're going to have to foot the electricity bill. So, right. um, you know, and and it's been tested, but you 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 test light with sunlight and all that kind of with photons, I believe. Um, don't quote me, but I believe <laughs> yeah. it's photons. <laughs> yeah, and I believe you get more photon. Uh, I know 100 percent you get more photons with natural sunlight than you would ever get off uh, any sort right. of light. Right. So. Um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of on my radar. I think, like you know, I, I you know, I want to build my own ha- eco home, and that's the kind of system I'm thinking about, kind of polytunnel nice. um, with the aquaponics. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, so go for it. Yeah, we, you know, gosh, this conversation is causing me to think about some other really cool places that we featured with people growing food. Yeah, some of them uh, are easy to replicate, and some are rather sophisticated. And I'll just share if I if we have the time, I'll just tell you yeah, a couple. Okay, well, there was one. It was on the same show that we did on hydroponics. Yeah, and there was a um, a entrepreneur in Atlanta, which is where I live, who. Um, developed a growing a hydroponic growing system inside of shipping containers. Have you heard about this guy? He has a company called Podponics. I, I've seen it in term I've seen I've seen that system set up for um the say the medical um, marijuana industry. Um, ah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, I've I've seen it in terms of research in you know other grower methods, which oh. is each to their own. So, but no, it, I haven't seen this particular gentleman's um, system. Yeah. Well, he uh, he actually his idea, and maybe there was somebody that came before him, but he's the first one we heard of. And, and his idea was to put these pod systems, these shipping containers in the parking lots of restaurants. And so the restaurants would grow the, um, usually lettuce in these pod systems. Yeah. And they could grow the equivalent of one and a half acres of cropland inside of a shipping container because of, you know, stacking the hydroponic yeah. trays. But um, it was fascinating. So you have a, con- a contained, controlled environment that... You isn't exposed to pests and diseases. No, no. Yeah, you recycle the nutrient water. Uh, he came up with a high tech way of lighting the yeah. um, the pods. Yeah. And the lettuce, it was delicious. I will say it was probably the best lettuce, some of the best lettuce I've ever had. Right. But um, you know, it's right outside the the backyard of, or the back door of the restaurant, which is yeah. nice because you know, in an urban environment, there's very little growing space, and so they had you know, the ability to walk out their back door and yeah. harvest lettuce from a shipping container and then make a salad with it minutes later and serve it to their customers. So Pretty neat. How is it powered, Joe? Is it is it a diesel generator or is it a, plugged into a mains? Um, this one, you know, I have to, I don't remember whether it was one, <laughs> of course it was one or the other and I don't remember yeah. which it was, but either one ob- would work. Ob- obviously, um, plugging it, um, diesel generator with... Um, would kind of kill our environment. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> it, I've, seen, and, I've um, seen set like I've seen you know like massive generators before. Yeah. Like I know the, the military use a lot of that kind of stuff. So I, I believe this was powered by a, a main power supply. I don't remember cool. a generator at all. But what I do remember is the conversation that we asked him, and, and that was how how do you plan on making this more energy efficient in the future? And he did. He has plans, or he had plans in the works hmm. to power everything solar by solar. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Did he? Have you seen? Any, yeah. There you go, Joe. Have you seen yes. any crazy LED um, food growing setups? We have not personally visited any crazy LED systems yet. We've got a few on our radar that you know we always are researching the next great story. Cool. And there's some really big companies growing massive amounts of food indoors with LED, as I know you know. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so. We're probably going to cover some of those stories maybe next season in uh, 2015. That'd be cool. But uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing what the LED lights are able to do for growing. I saw one grower, and um, he 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 a very clever guy. He 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 used NASA's research to find out the best LEDs, and he was utilizing those particular lights for his his um, growing system. And he um, he was getting exactly the same crop every time because oh it was so 
so fine tuned in terms of automating with a pH balance and and all that kind of stuff and the LED lights. But it was oh that was what it was with um with say different lighting system for ground food under lights. It, it, sometimes they get a variation of you know different crop, but with the LEDs it's exactly the same so they know exactly like it, it's like it's just like a carbon it's just like a copy of, of yeah. the crop so yeah it was very impressive um, totally consistent lighting no clouds yeah, exactly. no variable lighting yeah completely consistent that's for sure I would like to thank our sponsor this week, which is Eco Times Magazine. They cover everything green. Magazine is on the iPad and iPhone. They cover eco travel, amazing eco travel resorts, organic recipes, so, you know, amazing recipes to cook. Uh, eco gadgets, what's latest gadgets in eco. Amazing eco transport, so battery powered bikes, hybrid cars, battery powered cars. Renewable energy, what's the latest in renewable energy? in terms of all the different innovative ways we can get energy. Eco how to, so for example, how to build your own solar panel or own house or something along those lines. They cover eco architecture, so like eco building. They cover tiny houses, which are amazing small houses on wheels, which you should definitely check out if you haven't seen them. They cover all eco news, so what's been going on in the week and organic food ground techniques. Anything green really, and it's a weekly magazine and it's on the iPad and iPhone and or iTunes. So the link is below, so please enjoy. And now we get back to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think obviously, you know, going forward in in terms of, uh, say, space exploration, obviously these are the, the techniques and stuff they'll be using. So, yeah. you know, it's it's um, it's kind of groundbreaking in a way. And I, I, this is where, like, reading up on, you know, what NASA and, and these other kind of space agencies are doing in terms of food production is so interesting. Yes, I um, agree. And, there, and, and the other one I was going to tell you about, Alex, was this... Um, young lady that lives in New York City as well. Britta Riley is her name. And mm. she came up with a, a growing, a hydroponic growing system called the Window Farm Project. Right. Does that ring a bell? Um, no, but I'm guessing okay. it's a system by the window. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take yes. a guess. <laughs> yeah, good guess. But uh, Britta, the, what the story that with Britta was really neat is that uh, she was... Right there in the heart of New York City, of course, again, you know, all concrete, very little places to grow, especially in the wintertime. You're not going to be able to do it. But she was craving fresh produce throughout the year, and she wasn't able to get it for a big part of the year. So she, as an engineer, devised a plan to utilize um, soda bottles, you know, the two-liter soda bottles. and. Yeah and string them up one above the other, above the other, above the other, and then pump uh, nutrient water to the top and let it filter down through the top container to the next, to the next, to the next, going down. So it would drip feed the container underneath it. And she had one window. The reason she called it the Window Farm Project, she lived in an apartment that had one window in it. And she that's the only sunlight she had access to, but she developed the system and put it in front of that window mm. and was able to grow a little bit of um, lettuce and, you know, some basil and some other herbs that she could harvest from. And so she took that idea and continued to develop it. She crowdsourced it. She had people from all over the world contributing to their ideas and their expertise to, in gosh, that's been maybe five or six years now. But today, she's got a huge thriving business. She's been featured on all the major media. What's it called again? The window, the wind. If you Googled Window Farm, yeah, uh, you'd find out. You'd go to her, you'd see her website and see. Yeah, you'd see the uh, the pictures of her systems that have. That's great. Evolved tremendously. I mean, they're beautiful systems now. You know, they started out rather primitive, but now they're works of art, really. And then yeah. to to have it growing food in low light situations or in areas where it's hard to grow food. Uh, you know, anybody can do it. And so she's really made growing food accessible to people that may not be able to grow it any other way or don't have any experience because, you know, through the aquap the uh, hydroponic system, hmm. it makes it very easy. I, I, that's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. These, these, you know, like, you know, people in, say, a third world country that can't, you know... Um, yeah have things like this is 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 perfect isn't it you know yeah. so 
you know, like with the bottles, they could, anyone can do that. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so ooh, I'm going to switch up the f- question here. Okay. D- um, in terms of uh, um, food production, do mm-hmm. you, have you covered any livestock? Um, or do you tend to just focus on the garden and vegetables and stuff yeah. you can grow? Yeah. You know, we haven't um, we haven't covered livestock when it gets to the point of talking about it as food, right? Be- because we we just haven't gone there. You know, it's it's a little bit of a controversial thing because some people totally get that, and other people find it you know offensive to talk about you know <laughs> using using animals for food, which is crazy. I don't know. It's yeah. yeah it's, so it's we just haven't. We've talked about heritage breeds. We've talked about raising animals that um, are you know, um, like heirloom vegetables, you know, in short supply or their, their breeds are uh, yeah. dying off. And, and so we've talked about promoting heirloom breeds and we talk a lot about chickens and goats and things yeah. like that, but we never, we just haven't done much to talk about livestock for, you know, consumption. We just, okay. Like, yeah. I, I know it's, a, it's probably a tricky thing to cover, but you know, if, if you're, I'm sure Will Allen. Uh, if you're if you're building a complete system, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, um, I mean, chickens are amazing for the eggs. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen any crazy, um, you know, kind of egg systems in terms of like with chickens or geese or I don't know anything along those lines or? Uh, um, I don't know about systems. I've seen some really fancy chicken coops. We've we've done a lot with chickens. We've, we've definitely they've they've gotten good coverage on our show. Uh, sure. yeah, but uh, you know the thing that we're seeing here in the states is um, duck eggs are really becoming the next oh, yeah. big thing. They're yeah, nice, are you seeing they're... that? Yeah. No, no. But I, I'm I I think I've had I tried duck eggs before, but I, I think they're really really tasty. Yeah, and they're very rich. I hear. I really don't recall. They're massive. Is it is it geese eggs that are massive? But one of them's like huge. Um, I, I think duck eggs are bigger, and I right. know they're richer. Um, okay, but that's the thing that has come up a lot in the past year. People are uh, going crazy the, for the next. Yeah, the next eggs. thing they're adding to their livestock inventory are ducks. So. That's awesome. Um, so, what other cra- what's What's any like, um, okay, so say we're building the perfect food production system. We've, we've come across uh, Will Allen's amazing work mm-hmm. and um, Sweetwater with their automated, are they automated their systems or can be? Or? They are, yeah, they are. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So, um, and then we've come across the amazing window farms, which yeah. looks look really great as well, and um, low cost to kind of set up. Right. Um, so, what other what other amazing food techniques have you come? Oh, sorry, Emma and the Four Season Farm for the uh, grown vegetables in the yeah. Polytunnel slash Hoop House. Yes. Yeah. Um, what other techniques or or anything that's come across your radar that's going to come into our perfect food production um, overview. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this may or may not fall into that category, but it comes to mind because one of the um, one of the things we saw a couple of years ago was uh, a farm in Florida, and there's a few like this around the country that um, came about to grow food to make, uh, to give jobs to veterans that are coming back from war. Cool. And, uh, you know, these guys would come back and they were so traumatized and they, they just, they weren't as, e- it wasn't as easy for them to just get back into the workforce for various reasons like, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, yeah, things like that. Yeah. And so they were really struggling. And so this one veteran saw that in himself and he saw an opportunity. He'd grown up on a farm and he, and he just, that's what he knew is to grow food. And he saw that if he could create an opportunity to invite some of these other, other veterans to come and grow food as well, it would be the perfect job for them. It would be the perfect healing opportunity for them. And so it's this idea mushroomed. And so this one particular farm is called Red white and blueberry because they grow 
blueberries and they grow them in containers. Just, you know, um, 50 gallon plastic drums, like food grade drums mm. cu cut in half. And uh, they grow blueberries in these drums. And so here you don't have to get them into the ground. You just put them in the containers, which is nice because some of these guys have physical disabilities that make it difficult for them to bend over all the way if the plant were all the way in the ground. But here yeah. they are, they're raised up. And, um, you know, you've got, you've got a full scale farm and you've got people that are now gainfully employed and they're healing physically and mentally because of the farming and they're growing food organically. And, uh, it's just, one of What's the most touching episodes we've ever done to, to see this. What's yeah. it called again? The this was called Red, White, and Blueberry. Red, White, and Blueberry. Yeah. Cool. Um, but, but like the topic, it, I mean, if you Googled veteran farmers or veteran farmers, veteran farms, you would see probably several hits um, that talk about this. But I'll tell you, um, probably one of the most moving episodes we ever did because we saw in them when, when we would interview the veterans that were working there, how yeah. it, it literally saved them. You know, they were, they were coming back depressed and, yeah. and feeling like they had nowhere to go. In fact, um, one of the things that I'll never forget, one of the veterans said to us, um, he said, you know, you think that going to war would be the hardest thing? He said, but it's not. He said, it's coming home. It's yeah. the hardest thing. And that just hit me, you know? It's like, golly, like, wow, yeah. I'd never thought of it I that just, way. I just found it. It's veteransfarm.org for yeah. our listeners. So you can check that out. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, in term, here's a question. Reference um, other country growing techniques or any advances in growing techniques. Anything that's all kind of you've seen or, you know, that... that People aren't doing, but it is a way forward in terms of growing, you know, say different types of food. Have, is there anything like that that you know that comes to mind, Joe? I'm thinking as you ask me that, I'm, my mind is racing trying to think of something really aha that I haven't mm. seen before. Um, I, you know, I think I think the podponics and the advances in the hydroponic system are really where the technology has come into play for growing. I, you know, growing and gardening are, you know, thousands and thousands of years old. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's basics about that that will never change. You know, the nuts and bolts of gardening are the, always going to be the same. But um, to me, if you're growing in the ground, it comes down to the soil. And to me, I don't, I don't know that uh, anything other than trying to continue to add good organic matter is going to, Make so, much of a difference. Reference Poponics. Are these, are these the uh, company that I, I, I've seen and they just had the biggest warehouse I've ever seen in my life? And they were growing, um, obviously, uh, lettuce or whatever, um, but they could be used for, for other types of food as well. But is, is, is this for that company or is it another company that's doing a similar thing? But, I mean, we're, we're talking about a huge, huge scale here. Yeah, well, Podponics, the one that I'm talking about, is just yeah. small shipping containers. Oh, okay. The, yeah, the ones that, you know, but ride yeah, on the top yeah, yeah. of cargo ships. Yeah. It and was... since there's so many of those, that's what they're utilizing. Okay. There's one I came across. Um, I'll tell you about one in Singapore in a minute that, that I came, has come across my radar. But the uh, I did see someone, I think it, it, was, it was talking about a big commercial... Um, aquaponic system and this warehouse is like the biggest warehouse I've ever seen it was, it was very impressive I, I can't can't remember a company but I'm sure I'm sure with a bit of research it's out there but um, the one I want to tell you about Singapore is I don't know if it's come across your radar but they've got a, a kind of conveyor belt in terms of um, the kind of lettuce or, or the vegetables kind of circling up so it's a really tall building oh because yeah. they haven't got much land mass, so they're going yeah. up instead. Yeah. But they so they're you know spending I don't know say thirty seconds or twenty seconds getting the sunlight, and then they rotate downwards and hmm. so on. I have seen. Uh, I think I have seen this. Mm. It's one of those um, articles or pages we bookmark to get back to when we have yeah. the chance to revisit that. But it's, those kind of things catch my eye, and uh, that does sound very familiar. 
Yeah, the, well, the Singapore, um, they're really, um, well, one, they're extremely wealthy now, which is which is really positive. <laughs> um, but the they're really, like, working hard to, to in terms of food production for the island and stuff because they import, nice. like, pretty much everything. But, nice. yeah, it's a very, very impressive system. And, um, yeah, if, if you get the opportunity to do a show on it, that'd be... Um, It'd be a good one. Um, cool. Okay, Joe. To is there any other amazing food stuff that we haven't covered that has come across your five seasons of an amazing TV show <laughs> that we think we should tell our listeners about? You know, we've got a lot of great stories. I, I think the ones we've talked about are probably the most uh, cutting edge examples of what people are doing. You know, growing yeah. on top of buildings and uh, on parking garages and coming up with technology to do it with fish and so forth. So I think we've hit on the the really amazing stories, but there's so many stories that we've covered of just ordinary people growing food in, in the most unusual places or finding innov- innovative ways to create a business around growing organic food. Mm. Uh, boy, we have a lot of stories like that, but... Um, in in terms of what was the what was the first um, one you said that was so impressive the the two and a half acres on yeah. on the rooftop Bro- Brooklyn Grange Brooklyn Grange yes that Brooklyn sounds very um, and what kind of techniques were they using to grow there they were growing in engineered soil so it was just you know utilizing natural sunlight yep. and utilizing soil and drip irrigation cool uh, and that was it but they would grow you know all pretty much all the edible crops great and and was it fairly automated the the growing system or you know it... no i mean the 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 irrigation was automated but that was it otherwise they would weed by hand wow. and they would i'm know, looking at i'm by... looking at a photo of it and um if the, the website for our listeners is brooklyngrangefarm.com and it's very very impressive joe that's that's a uh, great what episode is that joe for, for yes us? um can you remember? You, yes, I can. I can look. And I, I don't have to remember. I can look. <laughs> uh, bear with me a second. No worries. It's uh, it's hugely impressive. Um, they're not using any polytunnels, though, either. I would definitely use some polytunnels up there. You know, probably not a bad idea. Um, you know, they said the, the biggest challenge the biggest challenge they had was the wind. Hmm. So they would... They would uh, you know, stake their tomatoes and get think that they had them all good and going. Mm. And the next thing you know, they'd come back the next day and they would have had a heavy wind and right. uh, everything was blown over. It's terrible. That's not so good. that was their biggest challenge was the wind. Other than that, um, I was, was thinking really, they could build a fence around it. Yeah. It's episode 517, by the way, for Brooklyn Grange. Great stuff. And um, can I view that on YouTube yeah. or anything like that? Well, you can view it on our website, which is com. All our episodes, everything we talked about, if, yep. if people wanted to just, uh, you know, Google the subject that we've talked about, and, and or not Google it, put it into the search field of our website, yep. they'll, uh, the episode is there for them to watch the whole thing. And Cool. Like Brooklyn Grange, that... That episode was pretty amazing to uh, to cover them, and they the folks at Brooklyn Grange said that we did a great job telling their story. So we were glad to hear that feedback. But that's um, amazing. Yeah. So um, thank you very much for coming on the show, Joe. And um, we'd love to we'd love to get you back on the show um, soon. Um, and um, anyone that's interested in finding uh, amazing TV about growing food, it's growingagreenerworld.com. Um, and you're on the social media as well, Joe? Oh, yes. Yep. yep. Cool. Yep. You're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, yep. Pinterest, and YouTube. So Yes, yes. All there. Um, thank you very much again like, for coming on the show. Likewise, Alex. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for enjoying our Eco Times Magazine podcast. We'd like to tell you all the platforms we're on. So we're on SoundCloud, we're on Stitcher, which is for Android. If you've got an Android phone, you can download a Stitcher, which is a podcast app, and get the Eco Times podcast on there. We're on iTunes, so you can get it on your iPhone and iPad and all your Apple devices. And we're on TuneIn as well. And we're on YouTube. So please subscribe um, to whichever platform works best for you. And thank you very much for listening. 
we want to say a big thank you very much to Eco Times magazine for sponsoring the podcast. They are a weekly magazine, cover everything green. So if you're interested in growing your own food, renewable energy, amazing eco resorts, eco gadgets, basically anything green, how to build your own home, tiny houses, eco transport, organic food, anything green really. Um, big thank you to them and uh, please check them out the links be below and it's on the Apple newsstand so you'll be able to get it on your iPad and iPhone thank you and have a great day